Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Fellowship Bible Church. Welcome to our Palm Sunday service. This is certainly going to be different than probably any Sunday morning service that we've done. Uh, thank you for all of the, the kind wishes and prayers and, and uh, reaching out to me and, and to each other. As you know, a bunch of us uh, in the church right now have COVID, including me. I'm on the fourth day of my symptoms right now, and... Uh, it's not pleasant, but it's but it's not intolerable either. So I'm just grateful to the Lord that uh, um, that we're just able to kind of keep getting together like this. The the uh, limitations though do prevent us from having the band here today, and so I can't, I don't want to do a service without any music. So so kind of what we've done is we've gone back into the vault if we have a vault and found a couple of uh, video recordings of of music from the past that uh, that we're going to sing along to today. We're going to sing, um, we're going to sing "Who Is Like Our God" first, and then we're going to sing. That's a three-year-old recording of the band in its current form. And then I have actually a fourteen-year-old version of Hosanna because we have to sing Hosanna on Palm Sunday. All right, so uh, we're going to sing praises to the Lord. It's a hard season for a number of us right now, but we are here to worship the Lord. Okay. 
So let me open us in prayer, and then we're going to begin to sing. <clears throat> Most holy Lord God in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord God, that we can gather together here today. I don't know where all of my brothers and sisters are sitting right now, but I'm just thankful, Lord God, that we can leverage this technology to all be about the same purpose at the same time. And we want to bring to you worship and praise. You are Yahweh of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. You are God. And there is none other. And we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to you in the name of Jesus, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Thank you for the precious gift of everlasting life that you purchased for us with your own blood. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for the gift of your spirit. Thank you for everyone who is joining in this right now and we pray lord that you would receive our worship and our singing from our hearts thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen all right this is who is like our god and it'll i think the way we've got this worked out is it will come back to me briefly after the song is over sing to the lord everybody
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, and it's Palm Sunday, so of course we have to sing Hosanna. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sorry, we're kind of making it up a little bit as we go here, um, giving Jonathan a chance to get out of here before I talk. So, all right, um, uh, that that was Larry Miller uh, playing the guitar with me, and Larry Larry goes back to uh, the time when I was brand new as the pastor here, and. Really, the the praise band ministry that that we have had for many years, he was like, like the like like he and I kind of started the whole thing like together. Really, with his guidance, he's a, a very accomplished uh, musician, good guitar player and singer, just a wonderful guy too. And uh, so, 
um, it was just great to be able to have that, it was special for me to be able to have that as part of our service here today and to be able to sing that song. But Larry, um, you may have heard me on a couple of our prayer meetings recently uh, praying for my friend Larry who had uh, COVID, that, that was him. So Larry, Larry had COVID and he recovered and uh, praise the Lord for that. And so we're just, uh, him and his wife, Mary, some of you in the church remember them going way back. They both had COVID, they both recovered and they're doing great. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's have a little bit of time in the word. Go with me, if you would, to uh, John chapter 12. I want to pray for our people, but I'm going to save that for the end. I want to, uh, I want to take kind of as much strength as I can here to go into the word. <clears throat> John chapter 12, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we have this time together here, and we thank you, Lord God, to uh, thank you for your gospel. Thank you, Lord God, for that day that our Lord entered Jerusalem and people were crying out, you know, what we just sang there. We know what it means. And we are thankful, Lord God, that you answered that cry. Hosanna is a cry for salvation, and you did exactly that. Thank you, Lord. As we read about that now here, Lord God, I pray that we would be ever grateful to you. And if there's anyone who needs to come to salvation through faith in Jesus, that they would cry Hosanna in their heart, that they would believe the word of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of of Yahweh, in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. I wanted to back up to the passage right before the uh, actual record of the entry into Jerusalem because you have that 
very important detail of Mary in Lazarus's house, and, and only the Gospel of John makes the connection between I mean, only only the Gospel of John records the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead, and so it's the Gospel of John that kind of connects those two things here for us. But they were in Bethany, and the Passover was approaching, and Mary does this incredible act of worship in this very costly ointment anointing him and uh, the consternation of Judas Iscariot, which was total hypocrisy and everything else. That part of it is well known, but sometimes what it gets forgotten is that Jesus made clear she was anointing him for his burial. And that's very important because that sets the setting for the, the whole reason why Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. This was the moment, before I came down with COVID, I, I, I planned to make this a rather lengthy message and really just blow up the, the significance of the, of the fulfillment of prophecy, even the connection to Daniel's prophecy in Daniel 9 and the prophetic timeline that gets outlined in the last few verses of Daniel chapter 9. But uh, this moment when Jesus enters Jerusalem is a very significant moment in the history of the world. God had foretold this moment for many, many centuries. And here it was now. This was God sending his son triumphantly into his city, into Jerusalem, for the purpose of being killed as a sacrifice for our sins. Now, you can see there's great excitement among the people. But it's possible that that excitement is misplaced because you can see that this crowd had, that had begun to gather for the Passover, uh, they're shouting and they're shouting, Hosanna, save us, save us. They are waving the, the laying down the palm branches and the other things that they do. And uh, you, have, you have Jesus coming in knowing full well that the people in the crowd, many of them, were going to be in the crowd just a few days later saying, crucify him, crucify him, away with this man, give us Barabbas, right? Let's go through some of the text here. Start in verse 13. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went out to him and they cried out this, Hosanna. And as we've said before, the word Hosanna means save us, God. It's, it's actually a very similar uh, to, to Yeshua, which is the, the, the way you would say Jesus' name in, in his language. Uh, Hosanna means save us, O God. Uh, uh, Yeshua means God's salvation, basically. So there's a connection between this and his name. They're very close. Uh, so this great multitude that was there for the Passover, there's so many details in this that are not accidents, you know? The fact that this is happening at the Passover, we've made this point many times before. The Passover was, of course, where the Jews recalled when God had set them free from the bondage that they had in Egypt back when Moses led them out. And uh, the children of Israel had been instructed to slay a lamb and put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and on the crossbeam of the doors of their houses when they were in Egypt. And the judgment of God passed over those houses and so they were spared, and then they were delivered out of Egypt, right? And the fact that this is happening at Passover is no mistake, because now it is the blood of God's own lamb that is going to be shed so that anyone who comes to believe in him, anyone who comes to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him and receive him by faith, it's as if the blood of God's lamb is splashed on the doorposts and the crossbeam of the door of their heart, of their lives. 
and they receive God's salvation so that when the judgment of God ultimately comes against all sin, which it certainly is, then that judgment will pass over them. So no mistake there. So they took these branches of palm trees, went out and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, which is from Psalm 118 and has very strong messianic connections there, right? Um, then, and I like this point here, in verse 14, it says, Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, and then the quotation, very famous quotation from Zechariah 9, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. The thing I want you to, the thing I want you to take note of there is Jesus is certainly very aware of this prophecy, but this, this acquiring this donkey to ride into Jerusalem, this isn't just something that randomly happened. If you read Matthew's account or Mark's account of this, what you see is that Jesus very deliberately gives very specific instructions to his disciples on going to acquire uh, this animal that he was going to ride on. So Jesus is making a conscious effort at this point in obedience to his father to present himself as God's Messiah, right? And the fact is that Jesus very often when he was preaching and teaching would tell people, you know, don't go and tell them who did this or, and he wouldn't reveal himself to a lot of people. Here is an example where Jesus very deliberately and unabashedly, very consciously and with great intentionality gets this donkey and rides it into Jerusalem, making the statement to anyone who is familiar with these prophecies, which the very religious group that would be gathered for the Passover would be, would understand that he is making the claim to be the Messiah. Now, this makes the people just feel wonderful, you know, because they are so excited that the Messiah is here, right? And so what you expect is that Jesus is going to enter Jerusalem and then fulfill all of their expectations of what it is that Messiah would do. Their hope and their desire was that Messiah would kick the Romans out and reestablish the, the kingdom of Israel and rule forever, right? And of course, the Bible does prophesy that Jesus will eventually do that when he returns. But it's very interesting. As I said before, the same crowd that says, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, becomes later on the crowd that says, crucify, crucify. What is it that would make that change? If you look at Matthew's account of this, this is very interesting. In Matthew chapter 21, uh, in verse 12, we are told the first thing that Jesus does when he arrives in Jerusalem after this happens. Now, if his job or if his intention were to fulfill the expectations of the people, what it would say is Jesus gathered a band of men along with his disciples and marched into the praetorium and forcibly removed the entire Roman legion and banished them from Jerusalem. But he didn't do that. You know what the first thing that Jesus did was when he entered Jerusalem? Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So right away you see that the seeds are being planted that are going to allow the religious leaders who want Jesus dead to manipulate this crowd into crying out for Barabbas and calling for Jesus' death because Jesus, not interested in simply fulfilling their expectations of him, comes into Jerusalem, doesn't go and confront the Romans, 
comes into Jerusalem and goes right into the temple and confronts them, right? What is the point of all of this? Why did I start this back in the previous passage of the Gospel of John? Mary had anointed Jesus for his death. The great celebration should it have been celebrated? Is it something that we should celebrate that Jesus entered Jerusalem that day? You better believe it is. But let's remember why. It's not just, it's not just this, uh, this, great, this great celebration over something that we consider for ourselves to be pleasurable. There is a very gruesome and yet holy duty that Jesus had to fulfill in coming. He had been anointed for his death before he entered Jerusalem. And then, of course, as the week went on and you began to see the conflicts that would arise between Jesus and the religious elites and you would start to see the Jews sort of turn on him a little bit and ultimately lead up to his crucifixion. All of that is playing into the hands of God. We don't look at that and look with consternation at the people who turned on Jesus. They are us. We have sinned. We are not righteous people. They were not righteous people. We are people who have broken God's laws. They are people who have broken God's laws. And when Jesus came into Jerusalem that day, and Jesus went out through all the things that he went through that week and ultimately leading to his crucifixion. Jesus died on the cross. It was a triumph. It may have looked like this great disappointment. We thought he was going to march into the praetorium and kick the Romans out. He ended up being led into the praetorium and mocked and had a, a crown of thorns put on his head and, and, and was mocked and ended up being crucified by those people. But that was God's victory. That was God's love for you. That is God's love. That's the point of what Jesus did. That's the point of Palm Sunday. The point of Palm Sunday is the moment had arrived. The great, gracious, loving, triumphant moment of God had arrived. That his redemption, first for the Jews and then for all the people of the whole world, had come. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? We have all sinned. I have sinned and broken every commandment of God in my life so many times, either in spirit or in actuality, like I've never actually murdered anybody. You're probably happy to know that. But, you know, if you're just guilty of hate in your heart, it's like it's the same as murder in the heart. You understand? The Bible says that. So when I hold up God's law and look into it, what it reveals about me is I don't have any business going, yay, God, God, you must be so pleased with me. God, look at how I live my life. Look how loyal I am to you. Uh, no, God's law condemns me as a sinner. But on Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem in fulfillment of prophecy for that final time when he was going to go to the cross and receive in my stead the wrath of God against all of my sin. There is nothing more important than has ever happened in the history of the world. Look, I know you can tell listening to me right now that, you know, I can feel it in my own body right now that my preaching is very different today than probably any other time that I've preached on a Sunday. Uh, COVID does interesting things to you. But uh, please hear this, as this is very clear to me. Look, Jesus made this sacrifice for our sins and shed his blood and he died. And then next Sunday, we're going to celebrate that on the third day, he rose again from the dead. If you will humbly come to him, acknowledge your sinfulness, come to repentance. You know, repentance isn't like, works it's not like doing anything you know repentance is this inward change of mind and spirit and heart that happens you come to realize that your sinfulness is real and and your sinfulness really is an offense to god and it's serious and you realize that you stand condemned before god 
And in that humility and realization, believe, believe what God did for you. That's what we're doing here on Palm Sunday. Jesus arrived for, make, for the purpose of making the sacrifice to redeem you. Believe. Put your faith in Jesus. He died for your sins. He rose from the dead. The only way that a person can be saved from their sins is through faith in Jesus. God's only way to redeem any man, woman, or child of any nation of the earth is that they receive Jesus by faith. It is the gift of his grace. Come to him. Come to Jesus. If you don't hear anything else that I say today, hear that. We're going to close uh, with a word of prayer now because I think I've reached about my limit of words, but I want to pray for the, the, the others among us here who have COVID. I'm not going to name all the names, but I think there's at least nine people right now that are struggling with it. And uh, let's bow before the Lord, and I'm going to pray to end the service, and I'm going to pray to, uh, to, for our brethren as well, okay? Thanks, everybody. Our Father in heaven, dear Lord God, we thank you so much that on what we call Palm Sunday, we know it's not just about palms and it's not just about a Sunday and it's not just some religious relic or, or anything like that. We know that this event occurred which fulfilled so much prophecy, which was a triumphant moment for you, that you had reached the point where your son the Messiah had arrived to fulfill his mission. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did. Because we have no hope of salvation other than what happened later that week. Thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Father, I want to pray today for the, my brethren in the church who are battling with COVID like I am right now. And I thank you, Lord God, that what I have heard, and this is true of myself as well, that even though the the um, the symptoms are pretty uncomfortable, I don't like feel like I'm in any grave danger or anything like that. So I thank you for that. That seems to be the case with uh, everybody, and and I just give you thanks and I give you praise and I pray, Lord God, for all of my brothers and sisters who are struggling with this, that you would just help us to recover. And Lord, it's been a long year. We so long, Lord God, just to. If it's your will, just put it behind us and just be able to fellowship again. Thank you, Lord. Let your will be done. You are sovereign and holy and powerful. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for all of your goodness to us, Lord. We thank you and give you praise this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just so you know what's going on this week, we will be uh, having our prayer time on Tuesday night like we always do. We will not do the Bible study on Thursday night this week because Good Friday is coming up. So we will have a Good Friday service that will be online only. Uh, that'll be Friday night, probably 7.30. Okay, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, announce it and give you more details as the week goes on. Okay, so listen, God bless you, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join into our service here today. You all have a great day.